and don't flip it right over the burner. I was doing that to keep everything in the light and in the focal plane, but yeah, you're gonna get some drippage, especially if your plate isn't quite big enough for the job. Today we're gonna be reviewing how Adam Raguza makes his Spanish tortilla. If you are new, welcome to the channel. My name is James. I've been cooking for many, many years and I have plenty of other recipes on my YouTube channel as well. If you like the video, then be sure to share, like, and subscribe. And if you'd like to support the channel, then by all means, check out my Patreon memberships or YouTube memberships. So on to the video. Spanish omelet, known as tortilla in Spain, or maybe tortilla de patatas, tortilla española. Tortilla just means little cake. Traditionally, it's just eggs and potatoes and maybe onion. I think Adam is thinking more about or how we think of tortillas in the Americas. A tortilla, at least in the Americas, is made out of corn, so mice, flour, and or it's mixed. But in any case, they're little flatbreads, and we use them to make enchiladas, to make fajitas, uh, Tex-Mex, we make them for burritos, we make them for quesadillas, things like this. So if you don't know the difference and you come to Spain and you visit and you go to a tapas bar and you don't know what it is, is with eggs. What's particular about it is the way that you put them together. It's not as tricky as a French omelet, but it's a little tricky. Some things can go wrong. Yeah, if you want to make a perfect Spanish omelet, then you do need skill. You need to know how to make one to be able to make it perfectly. If you were to compare that with a French omelet, on the other hand, yeah, to make a perfect French omelet with no color, to fold it perfectly is very difficult. You have to have the right tools as well. I'm gonna show you what I understand to be the traditional way of making this. Then I'll show you what you could call a slightly modernized method of making it. Then we'll go crazy and get creative with the flavors while still using the basic Spanish omelet method. Start with the veggies, one mm. big onion or a couple of smaller ones. Purists might not even use the onion, but I think the onion makes it. You will see them. If you go to any place, you'll normally see either with or without onions. Not everybody likes onions in their tortillas. And then of course you will find all other types. People will put cheese in it, they'll put peppers in it. Um, they'll change the variations and it makes it interesting instead of eating the same thing all the time. Cut them thin in whatever shape. I do quarter moons. Then about a pound of waxy potatoes, 450 grams or so. Peel them if you want to. I think the skins of waxy varieties taste good and they're mm. nutritious. In Europe we tend to peel absolutely everything. We peel tomatoes, we peel grapes, even peas, things like this. But if you are going to be using potato skins, just make sure that you scrub them well to get rid of the dirt. With big potatoes, you might cut them into quarters before slicing them, but with little potatoes like these, I'll just slice them into whole rounds. Thin, but not paper thin. If they're too thin, they'll break mm. apart before they even get into the omelet. Adam's right about this. You don't want to cut them too thin, and you don't want to cut them too thick. If you cut them thinner, they'll cook faster, but they'll be easier to crush. And if you crush them while they're cooking in the oil, they will absorb more oil. And if, of course, if you cut them too thick, uh, well, they'll just take a lot longer to cook. That might seem like a huge amount of stuff for an omelet, but the potatoes are gonna shrink in half, the onions will shrink mm -hmm. to almost nothing, mm -hmm. and the filling to egg ratio with a Spanish omelet is about one to one. Traditional way of doing this is to pre-fry the fillings in olive oil, fully mm -hmm. submerged in oil, shallow, deep frying. I see no reason to drop the onions into hot oil. You could splash yourself. The onions are gonna cook slowly so we can bring the heat in after we put them in safely. This is a good method, especially if you're going to be using onions and you want to caramelize them, you need to put them in the oil first. They have to cook for a lot longer than how long you're going to be cooking the potatoes for if you want to caramelize them. It is traditional to use a very good olive oil, but with the current prices of olive oil, um, of course save it, but you may have to resort to using cheaper oil if you can't afford it. Medium heat on my stove, but every stove is different. You might need it higher on a gas stove. We're trying to gently fry these until they go sweet. The goal is to caramelize the onions, so you don't want to see anything browning yet. Once I've given the onions a five minute head start, I'll put in the potatoes, and these I will gently lift in with a spoon a few at a time. He is right about this. You want to add the potatoes very carefully to the hot oil so you don't burn yourself. And if you're on a gas burner, you want to be extra careful because you don't want to fire in the kitchen. So little by little, safety first. Stir it every now and then to make sure things are cooking evenly. But while you're waiting, you can crack your eggs into a big mixing bowl. For this much veg, I'd say six to eight eggs, depending on how big they are. This is gonna feed mm. at least four people. Give those a good beating before you put in the fillings. Some traditional recipes say don't ever let anything brown. Some mm. say get a little browning right at the end, and I'm in that camp. This is one of those things that depends on, well, 
at home who you're cooking for and your personal taste. But anytime that you're going to be adding color to something, like caramelizing onions or anything like this, it adds flavor. You want that. If it starts turning black, it will add a very bitter taste to it. And some people like that. Me, no. But if you have a nice golden brown color, it's perfect. It's done when everything has a little bit of color and you can see some potatoes just starting to break apart. Those onions got 20 minutes total cooking time, so they should now be very sweet, which to me is the entire charm of a Spanish omelet. Now we gotta strain this. You could simply lift everything out with a slotted spoon, but we need to get the oil out of the pan anyway, so I've got a sieve over a heat-proof jug. You're not gonna have a free hand to hold the sieve, so make sure that the sieve sits securely over your vessel all by itself. This is one of those things that I would recommend heavily to do over the sink when frying because it's much easier to clean up everything if it's in the sink and you're not going to have spillage you're not going to have excess oil going everywhere there's our leftover oil here's our piping hot fried vegetables and they have to go directly into the eggs stir immediately and aggressively this is key to spanish omelet you're using the heat from the fillings to start the eggs cooking i'll stir it for a couple of minutes just like if i was stirring hot cream into egg yolks for a custard if you don't stir the egg in direct contact with the fillings will curdle prematurely I would recommend allowing the potatoes and the onions to drain for a few minutes just to cool down a little bit and to drain the excess oil because he's right if you add this directly to the eggs after you take them out of that hot oil you'll scramble the eggs and you don't want that and then after they cool down you want to add them to the egg mixture and you want to fold them in. You can mix them vigorously, but you're going to crush them. And if you don't want to crush them, fold them in gently and let them rest. You don't need to continuously stir them. Now salt. For this much, I would do like three quarters to one teaspoon of salt. You could take my word for it, or you could taste. The eggs are still pretty raw, so there's some possibility of foodborne illness. Make your own mm. risk to reward calculation. A few little tips. You want to be careful whenever you're tasting raw egg. In the EU, they vaccinate the chickens for salmonella, so the likelihood of you getting sick from eating raw egg is not as high as, say, in the U.S. The other thing is when you add that mixture of potatoes and onions to the egg, you stir it and you let it rest for about 10 to 15 minutes. This will help temper the eggs and they will start to thicken as well as with the starch that's in the egg mixture. So instead of having a runny tortilla, you'll have a uh, thicker tortilla. It'll be much thicker. If you try it at home, you'll see what I mean. All right, my nonstick pan is still on medium heat. Could you make this in a well-seasoned cast iron pan? I never have successfully. It sticks hopelessly every time. It is a bit challenging to cook a Spanish tortilla in a cast iron pan. It is, but it's possible. But you have to have a very clean cast iron skillet, very clean, and it must be well-oiled and extremely hot. I'm sure it's possible. The Spanish omelet predates Teflon. If you're a real cast iron cowboy, go for it. But a dish like this is the whole reason I keep a Teflon pan around. It has been around longer than Teflon. Teflon was made or it was discovered in 1938 by Roy J. Plunkett at the DuPont factory. Once the mix is in, I'll immediately turn my heat down to low. You gotta let this cook really gently to get the interior at least two thirds of the way cooked before we flip it. If the heat is too high, the bottom will burn while you wait. I'm doing a pretty thin tortilla here and even then it takes me four or five minutes of cooking before I can flip mm. it. If you go to the Wikipedia page for Spanish omelet, you can see how thick some people do these. I can't imagine how long that takes. To make a tortilla, a thick tortilla, it can take about 45 to 50 minutes. Give yourself an hour, a good hour, more or less. If you're going to be making a thicker tortilla and using the exact same measurements that Adam has used, I would recommend using a smaller omelet pan than what he's using right now. Maybe an 8 or a 9 inch omelet pan. Because that way, instead of having a flat tortilla like this, you're going to have a very thick one. Some people transfer these to the oven. I think that defeats the entire point of the technique. If you want to bother heating up your oven, just broil the top and call it a frittata. Frittatas are way easier. Okay, so when you shake the pan and you can see that it's like two-thirds or three-quarters of the way cooked inside, you can go around the edge and make sure nothing is stuck, and then you put a plate over the pan, then you flip the whole assembly. Ideally, your plate is at least an inch wider than your pan. Mine isn't, which is why I got some leaks there. It is very important, but very important to unstick it before you flip it. Because if you don't unstick it, you're going to have an accident. When you're flipping the tortilla, this is another one of those things that if you're beginning, if you're just starting out, do it over the sink. But you need to be confident when you flip the tortilla. 
you cannot be slow. You have to be a little quick when you flip it. Pan goes back on the heat and then you just slide the omelet back in. I like to crank the heat back up to medium. We don't have to cook this for as long on this side and I want some nice color. At this point, the omelet is solid enough that you can actually lift it up and have a peak without breaking it. That looks good. Now a fresh clean plate goes on top again and we turn it out one more time. This allows the hotter side to steam out before we eat it. And I like this very well rested. In a tapas restaurant, they might even serve it lukewarm. So with Adam's tortilla that he made, the color is good but I prefer a thicker tortilla. Just use like I said a smaller pan and you'll have a much thicker tortilla. Now this right here is my main problem with the traditional Spanish omelet recipe. All that used oil. In a Spanish household they might cook three tortillas a week so they're gonna reuse this oil. I am not so here's what I do instead. Yes we do reuse that oil. It's olive oil. It's not cheap. Um, you don't want to be throwing this away. The other thing is it's good to use this oil within just a few days because that murkiness that you see in the olive oil is the residual or leftover starch. And after a few days, it will not look so nice. So it's good to get rid of it. Just a normal coating of a nice olive oil in my pan. In go my two medium-sized onions over medium heat. And when you caramelize onions in just a little fat, you have to stir them almost constantly. If you don't, individual pieces or parts of pieces would be burned by the time the rest was caramelized. They've had their five-minute head start. Now in goes my pound of sliced potatoes. Again, I'll stir almost constantly, just taking a quick break to break my half dozen eggs into my mixing bowl. When you're sauteing, you need direct contact with the heat. You want to cook hot and fast, and you cannot have a lot of vegetables in the pan because otherwise they're going to steam and, well, basically they're going to boil because they'll be releasing the water. So in this regard, the old method of frying is maybe a little quicker, but you do waste a lot more oil. Caramelizing everything this way does involve about 20 minutes of near constant stirring. But to me, it's worth it to not have to strain out the fry oil and find some appropriate way to reuse it. If it seems like you maybe gave your onions a little too long of a head start, like they're getting too brown before the potatoes have cooked soft, just pour in a little bit of water. This is a really common technique when caramelizing onions, if you have some pieces that are looking a little crispy and threatening to burn. Sauteing the veg rather than frying it gives you more flexibility and control in this respect. This is a little trick that we use. Whenever you're sauteing or you're cooking anything and it's getting way too hot, you can add a little bit of water. A little like adding water to the fried rice to drop the temperature so it doesn't start burning. The potatoes are starting to break apart. They're cooked. So in the hot fillings go straight into my eggs and I'll stir them for a few minutes to get both the fillings and their heat distributed evenly throughout. A teaspoon of kosher salt. The reason I specify kosher is not because the grain size matters. It doesn't. You can use whatever salt you want. The salt is going to dissolve. I specify because different grain sizes measure differently. Big grains like kosher occupy a greater volume of space. A teaspoon of kosher salt is equal to about three quarters of a teaspoon of table salt by weight. Adjust for whatever kind of salt salt you're using. Why not just weigh the salt? Because kitchen scales tend to be super inaccurate when it comes to differences of just a few grams. And that is why if you are in pastry, you buy a pastry scale. But the more accurate the scale, the more expensive it is. And unless you're using it all the time, it's just going to collect dust. So for the average household, it may not be worth it. Remember, I reduced my heat to low or medium low right after I put the eggs in. And after four or five minutes, it's at least two thirds of the way cooked through. Time mm. to flip. And don't flip it right over the burner. I was doing that to keep everything in the light and in the focal Ooh. plane. But yeah, you're going to get some drippage, especially if your plate isn't quite big enough for the job. Like I said, you need to have some confidence when flipping the tortilla. You need to do it over the sink, or at least if you're good enough, you know that you're not going to spill it. And um, yeah, using a bigger plate than the pan is a very good idea. The fillings underneath tend to bunch up a bit when you slide the omelet back in. You can even them out by just swishing the omelet around in the pan. That works very well. I'm on medium heat again because the second side takes less time and I want some nice color on it like that. Let it cool thoroughly and the texture mm -hmm. of this is really reminiscent of a potato gratin. It has that satisfying al dente feel as you bite through the layers. It helps if you go around the sides with a spatula like Juan Carlos did in the last video that we reviewed with Vincenzo, going around to pat the sides to make them a little rounder. Otherwise, you're going to have little bits like this. If you just want to make an easy tortilla at home, it doesn't matter. But if you want to make a perfect one, it's a little tip. And I can perceive zero difference in texture or taste compared to the traditional version where we fried the filling. 
All right, sauteing and frying are a little different, but if you boil the potatoes or if you microwave, some people do as well to save oil and to make it a little easier, you will notice a very big difference in the final product. So now let's be totally unbound by tradition and get creative. I'm gonna slice up one medium onion. Oh, we're going for a third tortilla. Green okay. Onions. I've already taken off the decaying outer layers. I'm just slicing the white parts thin and I'll caramelize those with the rest. The green parts mm. I'll slice diagonally to make them pretty and I'll put those in at the last second, hence keeping them separate. This I agree, adding the green part of the green onions a little later on for garnish. And you can use the white bit or the stem. They are a little green, but the stem part um, to saute with. I'm gonna use a sweet potato this time. I'm still trying to like them. They're pretty and they're far better for you. It's big, so I've cut it into quarters before slicing thin. Sweet potatoes are going to add a bit of a sweetness if you make it with the tortilla. Um, I like sweet potatoes a lot. If you do like the skin, you can leave it on. Just make sure, again, to scrub it really well to get rid of the excess dirt. And if you don't like the skin, give it a peel. Sweet potato with caramelized onions is gonna be pretty sweet, so let's balance that with some fresh red chilies. These are mild ones, so I'll slice them seeds and all, and I'll chop up a little mm. bit of rosemary. I'll caramelize my onions as before, stirring almost constantly in a little olive oil over medium heat. After a five minute head start, in go my potato slices, mm. stir, stir, stir. When they seem about halfway cooked, I'll put my sliced chilies in. If any of you guys are gonna be coming to Spain, just keep in mind that when you go to a tapas bar, they may have a different type of tortilla española. So if you are visiting here and you see like a Spanish tortilla with cheese, give it a try. When the potatoes are just starting to break, I'll put in my rosemary and some spice. This is harissa, the great traditional spice blend of North Africa. Tons of cultural exchange between North Africa and Spain, obviously. That's true. The further south that you go in Spain, the more influence that you'll see, especially with the architecture in Granada or Cordoba. In places like this, you'll see a lot of influence. Stir for a couple of minutes to distribute the heat in with only a half teaspoon of salt this time because I'm gonna grate in some of this, manchego, the iconic firm cheese of Spain. It's quite salty like Parmesan, hence less salt. Adam got the DOP version of it. This is from the place of origin, which is good, but we have many different types. I have right now in my house, semi-hard. So anytime that you have any of these ingredients, it's important to taste, especially the cheese. I love cheese, but to taste it before you add it, because this will affect the flavor, especially if it's too salty. In go my green onion tops at the last second to keep them green and firm, stir those in. Mm. Back into the pan on medium heat, back it down to low. When it's mostly cooked through, I'll turn it out onto the plate. Whoops, that one got a little bit toasty, but nobody has to know because we're flipping this one more time after just a couple of minutes back up on medium heat. Beautiful. It did get a little toasty, didn't it? If it is that color, it's okay. It's not burnt completely or it's not burnt yet, but take it off the heat because that's like right on the cusp of burning. Let it cool, slice her up, and check this out. Rosemary flowers, totally edible, tastes like rosemary. I would never spend money for something this precious, but they're growing on my plant outside right now. I'm either gonna eat them or let them rot off, so I'll eat them, they're super pretty. So there you go, there's the Spanish omelet technique. Keep it super traditional or, you know, don't. Overall, Adam gave a lot of good advice that we do use in the kitchen and we do use cooking and making the tortillas. If you do want to make this tortilla and you want to make it a little thicker, like I said, if you're going to be using his measurements at the end, when you make the tortilla, just use a smaller pan and you'll have a thicker tortilla. A thicker tortilla will be easier to cook to temperature, to a temperature that you want. If you want it a little runny or anything like this, if you cook it too thin, uh, it'll cook too quickly. Hopefully guys, you learned something today, not just from him, but also from me. Hopefully I added a little bit of value. If you have any questions or comments, let me know down below. And if you did like it, then be sure to share, like, and subscribe. And if you wanna support the channel, then by all means, please check out my Patreon and or channel memberships. Now, if you want a delicious recipe or if you want an entertaining video, then you should click on this one here. And I will see you guys again very soon. Until the next time, take care.